Hello, this video is for IXL activity A1.D.2. It is titled Solve Percent Equations, and the three character code for this activity is 3 9 November. All right, so before we start, we're going to talk about converting words over to mathematical sentences. The idea of translating English words such as the word of or the word what and converting those over to mathematical symbols or operations. So starting off over here on the side, whenever we see the word of, we're going to go ahead and multiply. So we're going to realize that the word of means multiply. If we see the word what, we're going to replace the word what with a variable x because that's the unknown. If we see an equal sign, or no, better yet, let me go back. Uh, it's the other way around. If we see the word is, we're going to replace the word is with an equal sign. And equal signs don't go that way. That's an 11. Okay, we're going to replace it with an equal sign. And finally, we're, whenever we see a percent, we're going to convert it to a decimal. All right, so let's keep those things in mind. The word of means to multiply. The word what, we're going to replace the variable x. If we see the word is, we're going to replace it with an equal sign. And if it's a percent, let's change it over to a decimal and see how that all helps us out. So 80% of blank equals 8. So we have a percentage here, so let's convert that to a decimal. 0. 0.8. The word of means to multiply. We're just going to use parentheses. And of what? Of x, right? The unknown and that equals in this case 8. So we now have a one step equation. 0.8x, here I'll rewrite this 0.8x times x equals 8. So the 0.8 is tied to the x through multiplication. The opposite operation is division. We want to divide by the very number we wish to get rid of. And what we do to one side, we're going to do to the other. So the 8s cancel each other and we just end up with x. And then 0.8 divided by 8 is going to get 8 divided by 0.8 is going to give us 10. Now you might have been able to think through this and say, uh, 80% of some number is 8. Well, that's 10 because if I have 10 and I take 80% of it, that's going to be 8. So you kind of do some backwards thinking on some of these, and on some of those, on some of these questions, that's going to be quite simple. Like for instance, this next one: What is 75% of 12? Well, many people recognize 75% as 3 fourths, right? So what's 3 fourths of 12? Well, you realize that 12 is, uh, what, uh, if we put it in 12 times, uh, 3 times 4 is 12. So you realize that's 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. And you realize, okay, 3 fourths of that is 3 of these 3s. So that's going to be 9, right? Now, it's not always going to be so simple. So let's go through the translation concept. The word what is x. What is equal sign 75% percent, 0.75 transferring it over to a from a percent to a decimal of means to multiply and then 12. Well, if we put into a calculator or if we write out in long division, do 0 0.75 times 12, we're going to go ahead and end up with nine. In my mental math, a lot of times if I saw this, if someone asked me, what's 0 0.75 times 12? I would realize that, well, 0.75, that's one-third or 75% in the multiplication means of and 12. So I would think in my head, oh, okay, that's three-fourths of 12. So a little bit of a side note there on mental math skills. Either way, uh, sometimes you'll be able to just kind of realize that, oh, I know that one without really doing the calculation, or you can translate and calculate. Well, the next one, 36 is 100% of what number? Well, many of you are thinking, oh, that's easy. That's 36, right? 36. 36 is 100% of what number? Well, 100% of 36 is 36. Now, if we were to translate that, we could do 36 is 100%, which would be, as a decimal, would be 1.0. Of means to multiply, and then what number is X? So, in this case, we would be, okay, 36 equals... Uh, Hold on, we gotta go back. In this case, we would end up dividing both sides by one, right? One, and divide that by one, 
once canceled, leave me with x, and 36 over 1 is equal to 36. So you could use this way, but many people would be like, oh, okay, I know that one. For instance, here's another easy one. Complete the following statement. 100% of $10 is uh, $10, right? If someone had $10 and you get, said, give me 100% of your money, they would have to give you all of it. So 100% of 10 is 10. Now we translated this 100% to a decimal would be 1.0 of would be 10 is our equal sign there. And then the box here represents the unknown. Well, 1 times 10 is 10. So x would equal 10. 13 is what percent of 65? Okay, all of a sudden it's not quite as simple as what is 100% of 36, is it? So let's go ahead and translate this. 13, the word is, equal sign, what percent, the word what, we don't know, and of 65. So in this case, we need to multiply that times 65. So the x is tied to the 65 through multiplication. The opposite operation is division. We want to divide by the very number we wish to get rid of. And what we do to one side, we do to the other. Okay. And the 65s would cancel each other. And that's going to leave us with x. And then we now have to convert 13.65 over to, well, it's got to get to a percent. But let's get it to a decimal first. So I'm going to take my calculator here and... I realize that every fraction is a division problem, so I'm going to do 13 divided by 65, and that's going to give me a decimal of 0 0.2. Now, to go from a decimal to a percent, I need to move my decimal to the right two places. So I'm going to start at the decimal, 0 0.2, and I'll move my decimal over two places, 1, 2. I'm going to need a place holding 0 here, so that becomes a 20. Throw the percent sign on the end, and so my answer is. 20%. The next one, what is 130% of 700? So let's go ahead and translate it. What is x is equals 130% is a decimal. Move that decimal back two places. 1.3 of means to multiply and then put in our 700. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply that out on my calculator here. My uh, kind of mental math that 700 and then 30% of 7. Okay, now I think I'm just going to go ahead and go 1.3 and multiply that times 700. And I'm going to get 910. 910. So that would be my answer. $910. Complete the following statement and round your answer to the nearest percent. So chances are it's going to end up being a decimal, maybe. So in this case, blank percent, so we want x of multiply times 600 equals 840. Well, we need to divide both sides by 600 to get the x by itself, right? So let's go ahead and divide 840, 840, and we're going to divide that by 600, and that's going to give us an answer of 1.4. So do we put 1.4%? Nope, not yet. Remember, we just created a decimal number here. We need to go from a decimal to a percent. So, oh, there we go. And the decimal is 1.4, so we're going from decimal to percent. So the decimal needs to move over one, two places. So it, we end up with the value of 140. So it's 140%. Now, does that make sense? 140% 140 of 600 equals 840. Well, 100% of 600 would be 600. If we're taking more than 100%, then what we get should be greater than what we're taking that percentage of. And 840 is greater than 600, so our answer seems to make some sense. Complete the following statement. Write your answer as a decimal or a whole number. Oh, we were supposed to round to the nearest percent. Yeah, we're good to go. Okay, just want to double check. So, and speaking of double checking, we could always double check our answer here. We could convert... 140% uh, to 1.4, multiply that times 600, and if we did 1.4 times 600, we would get 840, so equals 840. So you could always go back and double check your answer. Once you get the answer, you could double check it by actually doing the calculation there. Okay, what percent of, so blank of, 
seven dollars fifty cents so that's going to be seven point five i'm just converting seven dollars fifty cents to seven point five of means to multiply right and the unknown is x so instead of the parentheses since it's a variable i'm just going to go ahead and put seven point five x that is seven point five times x remember of means to multiply so equals ten dollars eighty cents i'm just going to put ten point eight i drop that zero off the end so I need to multiply both sides by 7.5 to solve for x. So 10.8 divided by 7.5, and I'm going to get 1.44. Now, I still have to change this. This is a decimal answer here. It's not 1.44%. Think about that. If I put 1.44%, 1.44% of $7.50 is $10.80. That doesn't make any sense because... We're taking just a very, very small percentage of it, right? Because one, per, you know, like 10% of $7.50 is 75 cents. So we, we know that that's not the correct answer. That means that this is a decimal. We still have to go from the decimal to the percent. So be careful not to just type in what you get here whenever you solve for percentages, because those percentages have to be changed back over, those decimal answers need to be changed back over to percents so we'll move that decimal over two places throw a uh, percent sign on the end answer is a decimal or a whole number indeed 144 is indeed a whole number so we're good to go write your answer as a decimal or a whole number all right some percent of 175 so that's 1.75 times some no unknown percent remember of means to multiply equals 329. Hopefully we're getting good at translating and just writing a math sentence from our example that's given. Now to solve for x, we're going to have to divide both sides by 1.75. So 3.29 divided by 1.75 is going to give us 1.88. Now remember, this is a decimal number that needs to be written as a percent. So we're going from decimal to percent. So the decimal has to move to the left two places. So we're going to start 1.88, move decimal two places to the right. We end up with 188. Throw that percent sign on the end, 188%. Here we have 190% of $563.70 equals some amount of money. So let's write the percent as a fraction. Or not a fraction. Let's write this percent as a decimal. So we're going to move that decimal over two places and end up with 1.9 of means to multiply so we need to multiply times five hundred sixty three dollars seventy cents we can drop that zero off of there and let's see what we get so 1.9 multiply that times five six three point seven and that gives us one thousand seventy one dollars and three cents one zero seven one point zero three here we have something unusual. We have a mixed number percentage. All right, well, I think we can deal with that. So first, let's go ahead and change this mixed number here, 1.72%. Let's write 1.172 and 9 tenths percent. So let's write that as a decimal, 172 and 9 tenths. That would be 0.9 percent, right? So we've just, all we've done is we've converted the mixed number over to a decimal number. 9 tenths is 0.9. So now let's go ahead and do our math here. So what is, what is the unknown? Is is the equal sign. So what is 172.9%? So we want to write that as a decimal. Move that over two places. So that's going to be 1.729 of multiply times thirty dollars and twenty seven cents so now we just need to multiply these together and we'll, we'll get our value of x and in this case one point seven two nine that's our converted percentage multiply that times the thirty dollars and twenty seven cents and we're going to get fifty two point three three six eight three but it says to round it to the nearest cent, because remember this is money that we're talking about. 
So we need to round to this place right here. Looking to the right, 6 is greater than, is 5 or greater. So we're going to raise this 3, becomes a 4. So $52.34 would be our answer. $52.34. Next question, what is 137 and 1 half percent of 24? So let's take that 137 and one half and change that over to 137.5. All I did was is I changed the mixed number to a decimal. It's still a percent. We haven't moved the decimal yet. Now let's go ahead and write our problem is out. What is the X is equals. So X equals and now our percentage is a decimal with a decimal over two places. So we end up with 1.375 of means to multiply times 24. Remember, using parentheses to separate the numbers lets us know we're supposed to be multiplying those numbers. So let's go ahead and do that. 1.375, multiply that times 24, and we end up with 33. So 33 is 137, one half percent of 24. And it's greater than 100%, so we would expect a number greater than 24. And final two questions. So complete the following statement. 100 and 102 and 3 fourths percent. So let's do this as 102 and then 3 fourths is a decimal. That's 0.75. And this is still a percent. So it's still a percentage. All we did was convert the mixed number to a decimal. Now let's go ahead and convert the uh, percentage over to a decimal. So let's move that decimal over one, two places. So we're going to have 1.0275 of means to multiply times the unknown value which we'll call x so actually we could just leave that as x we know this is multiplication equals 48.2925 so we need to multiply we need to divide both sides by 1.0275 so 48.29 25 divided by 1.0275 and we're going to get 47. The answer is 47. And final question here. 25.96 is 5.5% of what number? So let's go ahead and do 25.96 is, which means equal, and then 5.5% so 5.5%. Now this is tricky. Don't just move the decimal one place and say it's 0.55. That wouldn't be correct. We need to move it two places. So we need a place holding zero there. So we're going to end up with 0.055. It's 5.5% 5 as a decimal is 0.055. Of means to multiply. So that's times what number? That's the unknown. So in order to solve for x, we need to divide both sides by 0 0.055. And that's going to leave me just x on the right. And then finally, 25.96 divided by 0 0.055 is going to give me 472. 472. 472. All right. And... Okay, pause it there. I want to check my math. I was thinking backwards. And then uh, this is the number. So the big number is 400 and 472. I mean, a little bit of, little bit of mental math. I'm kind of at 472. Let me show you what I was doing. And uh, I was thinking, okay, 5.5%. Well, 10% of 472 uh, would be, four, would be uh, four, 47, 20, right? And 5% is about half of that. So if we divided this in half, we would get pretty, I'm going to use approximate because I'm not going to do the exact math, but we would get pretty close to that 25.96, right? That 25 bucks. I'm just kind of looking at the $25. So I was just kind of doing some mental math there. Does the answer make sense? It's always good because for a moment I was thinking, did I miss a decimal someplace? Should I have a decimal? And so I went back, did a little bit of mental math there and ask myself, does that make sense? And indeed it does. So 
Those are all of my examples for IXL A1.D.2 solve percent equations. And good luck with your activity.